What's up, idiot soul? And today, well, you read the title, and you know what? I mean it this time. After making four of these, I feel it's time that I should probably stop making house recommendation videos for this mod. I think we can all agree that too much of a good thing is bad, but since one of you decided to ask for more, I decided to come through the list of houses big and small and come up with this final selection for you. That being said, this is a huge reason why a lot of you have come to this AGOT channel in the first place. Although I, I wouldn't say AGOT channel, my channel in the first place was an AGOT video, was a house video that I didn't even put nearly as much effort into as I have these last three. These ones I've put a lot more thought, a lot more writing, a lot more scripting down, which you maybe have or haven't noticed. And I, I do feel a little bittersweet about saying goodbye to it. However, I think that I need to move on and focus on other things other than making these easy, cheap, quick guides. I, I mean, at least just in this regard, I will still make guides for Crusader Kings 3, just not house recommendations for the same mod into Infinity, because I could literally talk about every single house at some point if I really wanted to, but I don't. I would rather you discover some of these on your own, but these are gonna be the last 10. That's right, 10, not just seven like the last two videos. 10 houses that I recommend. So let's go, starting off right here in my favorite region of the reach. So after my recent reread of A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms, I find it pretty fitting to include House Ashford as the first house on this list, since they're the first major house we see in the host of the major and tragedy-ridden tournament where King Daeron the second son and my favorite Targaryen Prince Baylor Breakspear is killed on accident by his brother Makar in a trial by seven in defense of Duncan the Tall. Ashford is also the site of one of Robert Baratheon's few defeats during his rebellion, House Ashford being a bannerman of House Tyrell. They remained loyal to the Targaryens during the war, and this is where that battle was fought. I believe it was won by um, Sir Randall Tarly, if I'm not mistaken. But they don't actually have a ton of lore for their house as far as I could see from an initial pass, but I do kind of like their chevron and sun sigil, and orange is also my favorite color, as you guys know. So of course I'm gonna include them on here, and they're a fun little number one house and a fun little nod to my favorite novella in the three that we have so far for the Knight of the Seven Kingdoms. So yeah, there you go. That's house number one is House Ashford. House Oakheart seems to be a pretty popular choice when people talk about their favorite minor houses, and I think that's for good reason. The Oakharts are descended from the First Men, like a lot of houses, and claim John the Oak as their founder. John the Oak was a half-man, half-giant son of King Garth Greenhand, who is said to be the creator of knighthood and chivalry in Westeros, which is pretty sick. The Oakharts are therefore known as a house of warriors, and also for their distaste for the Dornish. Despite their northern proximity, many of their members are famous for their exploits in the Passes of Dorne. The Oakharts were one of the many older and perhaps more worthy houses to be passed over by Aegon in his selection of the Tyrells to rule the Reach. Interestingly, their chivalrous and loyal nature has put them at both good and perhaps bad sides of conflicts as their sense of duty often seems to overshadow their sense of right, such as their loyalty to Septon Moon during the reign of King Magor, and their taking of both sides during the Blackfire Rebellion, which caused the death of many in the Reach, which I believe is also touched on in the Knight of the Seven Kingdoms books. Regardless, this house has boasted many famed knights, as well as some Kingsguard, and is the perfect place to begin your exploits to taking the Reach back in the name of a more worthy house. Perhaps you can take Highgarden in the name of the Oak Hearts and sit upon that grassy throne. I don't know why the throne is grassy. That just sounded, I thought it would sound cool, but it didn't sound cool. I, I, this next house, I'm going to be real, is only on here for two reasons. One, they have an ancestral Valyrian steel longsword called Orphan Maker, which, although a little tryhard, is still very cool in my opinion. But more importantly, too, they are related to a man called Bold John Roxton, who is such a raging badass during the Dance of the Dragons that I included them. That is literally the only reason. Bold John is such a Giga Chad, not even a Giga Chad, man is a Sigma Theta Chad. At one point in the story, he literally cuts a man in half with Orphan Maker, and later has a famous exchange with the hated Targaryen bastard Hugh Hammer, where he apologizes to Hugh for his death in battle before killing him. The absolute golden rings cannot be denied. Other than that though, they don't have a lot of lore. I don't even think any of their characters appear in the books, at least the current books, as far as I'm aware. But you know what, I wanted to include another house that has kind of a cool history, and they have cool rings. I don't know, they have a, this really nice proximity to the Red Mountains, um, but on the Reach side. And then you obviously have access to the Arbor and Old Town, which this is a nice little area of the map that I often enjoy playing in. So there you go, that's, that's three houses in the Reach to start off. This one is our first and only choice on any of these four lists I've made, which is north of the Wall and technically not a house, as the Thens are a tribe of people rather than a noble family. However, out of all the free folk, I chose them because unlike most of the wildlings we see in A Song of Ice and Fire, they are much more like southerners than not. They use bronze from their ore-rich hills to make weapons and armor in the fashion of the First Men. They're led by a singular lord they call the Magnar, which you can see right here. 
and are frequently in the company of giants as they openly trade and bargain with the creatures due to their location. I think the struggle mechanic north of the wall is probably the most fun you can have in the mod as of right now without dragons and without other features that'll be added later on. And trying to become king beyond the wall is a really cool goal. And the Thins already have a king type leader who's called a lord anyway, so why not just upgrade and become king beyond the wall. Next we had south, but still technically in the north for House Dustin. This one has been requested a couple times by people, and so I finally decided to include them. This lady in particular is not great in the books. She's kind of awful, but this guy is a Chad. He goes with Ned to the Tower of Joy. Unfortunately, he dies. And then the loyalty of House Dustin because of the Reesewells. Uh, it comes into question because she turns them against the Starks. But anyway, let's 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 go to the history. Well, we we don't need to talk about that. This is this is before that. You can change that. Okay. Okay. The Lords of Barrowton are the fifth house on this list and are also the descendants of the Barrow Kings and the first King of the First Men, or so they claim. They rule the Barrowlands, an old land of hills formed by graves of lords and armies long gone. In fact, their seat at Barrow Hall is built atop the Barrow of the First King. So technically, they live on top of his tomb, which is sick. They are a noble and proud house and historically fiercely loyal to the Starks. However, as I mentioned, that changes following the death of their lord during Robert's Rebellion. However, you can also change that because this is a mod, and that's the whole purpose of this, is to rewrite history. House Dustin also fought for Princess Rhaenyra's Blacks during the Dance of the Dragon, being one of the major forces which aided them in battles like Butcher's Bell, where many of the Green's lords and commanders were slain. And overall, I think they're just a really cool northern house. I really like their sigil that it's two rusty axes and a crown to signify their first king status. I mean, the first crown is a really fitting motto for them. I don't actually know if that's canonical or not. Somebody can correct me on that. But yeah, I think I don't pick a lot of houses in the north. The north doesn't interest me terribly. But House Dustin is, you can't, you can't go wrong. They're very cool. And all these little barrows that they added onto the map that you can see from above are super, super sick. So, yeah, and you can also see it right here. If you look at the High Lordship of Barrowton, you can see that they're on top of this mound, which is super cool. Super, super great job. Definitely play as this house if you have the time. Moving down to the Riverlands, I actually can't show you this one because technically this house isn't on the map, and that's House Mud. So I'm just going to put a big mud thing right here, and then I'm going to talk about them. This is our first and only extinct house to make one of these lists. House Mud were first men who ruled the Riverlands for about a thousand years and were kings in the region when the Andals came to Westeros. They were considered among the most powerful kings of the First Men, and had territories spanning as far south as Blackwater Bay, which is over here. They were defeated by seven Andal kings, including one belonging to the next house I'm going to talk about in this region. Their descendants were basically made into minor lords, if even that. They have two surviving members in the lore, or in the books, both serving with the Golden Company. But in game, you can find them as a courtier of the Blackwoods. To play as them, you have to first land one of the Muds in a county, and then in the pause menu, which this might not show up, there it is, you can switch character and then play as them from there. Or you can just make a custom character as I showed you in the custom house video, uh, use the house customizer, and then play as them that way too. Regardless, I think this is a really cool house with probably the most obvious path ahead, and that would be to retake the Trident and reform the Kingdom of the Trident uh, as the ancestral rulers. I think a lot of people would really like this house, and I really wanted to include an extinct house because I have done an extinct houses video, but I haven't included one on these lists, and some people don't know that you can restore extinct houses, so there you go. House Mud is my choice for this final list. The next house is actually technically two houses, much like the Fossaways, and that's House Vance of the Riverlands. Descended from the Andal King Armistead Vance, the greatest of the Andal Kings who defeated House Mud, who we just talked about. House Vance is a fairly large minor house that is actually split into two, much like the Fossaways, like I just said. One house sports this black dragon, as you can see, and the other sports the green. It's not technically confirmed by George why that is, but most people suspect it's because these are the house, or these are the people that the house has supported during the Dance of the Dragon. Probably meaning that this was a much bigger territory before this split happened. They're also named after, and this is actually the reason I included them on this list because I think it's cool. They're also named after the author Jack Vance, uh, the acclaimed science fiction and fantasy author, and one of Martin's personal favorite writers. And I think that's really, really cool. He also did that, as I've mentioned in a previous video, with the tour down here with House Jordan being named after Robert Jordan, uh, the author of The Wheel of Time. So just like a little Easter egg house, and I think it's cool that they're canonical. And I do think it's cool that there's two of them. I don't know exactly if they used to control Lake Haven as well, but perhaps you could sort of unite this area and become one of the stronger houses in the Riverlands. But of course that choice is up to you. I would personally start with House Vance of Wayfarer's Rest because I support the Blacks, but you know I'm also a good person. Our eighth house on this list is House Marbrand, and I actually don't have a ton of lore on this, uh, but I do always like to include a loyalist house of some form on these lists, and I think that Marbrand, out of most of these, 
is probably the most loyal to their lords of Casterly Rock, the Lannisters. Jamie Lannister, a man not famous for having many friends, is even friends with the heir to the house, Adam, who is right here, Adam Marbrand, who is himself one of Tywin's best knights, which is incredibly interesting. So a great potential ruler once you get rid of this guy when he dies. I also like the House Sigil a lot. I know that's a stupid reason to put a house on this list, but Burning Bright is also potentially their actual uh, motto. It's it's rumored. It's not actually confirmed one of those houses. But I don't know. Having a house whose sigil is a burning tree is kind of cool. I have to imagine that this signifies the split when the Andals came and the First Men and the Andals sort of married together and became one. I have to imagine this might be a burning weird tree and sort of signifies the beginning of their house uh, in this new age of the Seven. But I, I don't know, George has never confirmed that, but I think that, that would, that's a cool headcanon that I'm going to have. I really don't have a, a super direct path for you on this one. Honestly, a lot of the times in my games, Tywin tries to dissolve the kingdom, so I would assume you would just go with him on that. And, you know, I always like, as I said, I always like to put loyalists on here. So if you like to play as a loyalist to your overlord and just sort of chill, there you go. Just like with loyalist houses, I also like to include houses that are, uh, by all accounts, absolutely despicable and awful. And there are a few more despicable and awful historically than House Weil of the Boneway, although they've called it the Stoneway here, but whatever. Now these guys really, really suck. I'm not even gonna sugarcoat it. They're basically famous for being awful. They're famous for their feuds and wars with the Marcher Lords of the Stormlands due to their proximity, including the Karens, the Dundarians, and the Swans. Their castle, which I don't know if you can see it on here. Yeah, their castle is famous for having tunnels underneath it so that they can reposition in the frequent attacks that are, are you know, placed upon them because people hate them. In the first Dornish War, when Aegon attempted to conquer Dorne for his realm, a man named Wile of Wild defeated Oris Baratheon's forces by ambush when they attempted to enter the Boneway, which I can't actually see on here, and I assume it's probably somewhere over here. Uh, it's basically a famous pass that's incredibly difficult to get through because it's easy to be ambushed, and that's what they did. All my Elkhart lovers will probably also want to, you know, cover their ears for this next part, but because the Wiles, they have their own version of Red Wedding infamy when that same Wile of Wild came to the wedding of John Catherine and Alice Oakhart. While and his men, breaking guest rights much like the phrase, attacked and gilded the young lord, if you don't know what that means, look it up, had their way with his bride and then sold her into slavery, and then they slew pretty much all the guests, including the Lord Oakhart himself who was in attendance. Not not great, pretty, pretty bad, not a very nice house, kind of despicable. I'm not sure how old their sigil is, but I do have to wonder if it's derived from the time they, under a flag of peace no less, killed King Daeron I and captured Prince Aemon the Dragonite Targaryen. Their lord, also named Wyle, then forced the new King Baylor the Blessed to walk on a bed of venomous snakes to free his cousin. So pretty pretty not great people. Um, Dorne is, is full of these stories of just not being great, not being accommodating, being very vile, not so, not so hot. But I always like to include a little bit of an evil house on these lists, and I, I you know you can't go much worse than House Wyle. So there you go, that's 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 your choice. And our Dornish pick for this list. The final house on this list, I actually pick for a bit of sentimental reasoning. It feels a little bittersweet to be picking this final house because that means that these videos of this sort, at least for this mod, are coming to an end. And that's House Penrose of the Stormlands. I chose this house because, well, one, they have a lot of historical members, yes. They were loyal to the Blacks during the dance. They have a really nice motto, set down our deeds. They have many historical members who have served in various places of importance, yada, yada, yada. That's, we all know that, we all know that. There's also potential that they are referenced to Sharon K. Penman, who wrote a book on the War of the Roses, which Martin based much of his A Song of Ice and Fire series on, so that's cool. But really the reason I picked House Penrose is, well, because of myself. I'm a writer, I have a journalism degree, actually, and I've published short and long fiction and I write these scripts for you. I wrote these words you're hearing right now, more or less, although I tend to ad-lib a lot just so that these videos don't sound a little too, you know, rehearsed. But I picked them as a sort of period to stamp on these videos. They're largely responsible for what was, at the time of making this, the most successful month in this channel's history. A deed I'd like to set down, as it were. So if you ever decide to play as Penrose, I hope you think of me in this channel, and I hope you know I appreciate you. If I didn't have viewers and wonderful fans who supported me, I wouldn't have anyone to watch these videos. I wouldn't have any reason to make them. It would just be me writing to myself. But I suppose I do that a lot anyway, too. So I guess it wouldn't be so bad. That's it. That's our 10. I want to thank you guys so much for being here for all of these videos, for watching them and for learning from them and for, you know, teaching me about things that I didn't know. I appreciate you all very much. And as we head off in the future, I hope that you stick around because I have a lot planned for this channel. And even though that might not always include Agot, it'll always have a special place in my heart. And as always, you know, when they update it, we will come back. When the Blackfire Rebellion is added, the bitter steel will ride, baby. Don't you worry. But until that point, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Soul. 
As always, if you like this video, maybe consider leaving a comment, a like, and if you want to, you can subscribe, although you don't have to. But that's going to be it for me. I will see you in the next one.